Hi, I'm Ann Wolf. I'm the Clinical Director of Physical Therapy for Emerge Pediatric Clinic. Today we are going to be talking about gait deviations. So that is the medical term for any abnormality that you might see during walking or running. We are going to cover the three most common gait deviations. We will talk through some common causes, treatment, and when it might be appropriate to seek out PT for your child. Before we start with gait deviations, let's talk about normal gait. So gait means walking or running. A typical gait pattern in a child would look like a heel strike or a midfoot strike. So that strike is the first part of their body that hits the ground when they step forward. They would roll towards their toes or the balls of their feet. They would push off of that foot. They would lift it high enough to clear their toes and they would swing it forward for the next step. We typically see walking emerge between 12 and 18 months. We don't expect a mature gait pattern until three years old. Between the one and a half mark and the three year mark, tons of changes happen during gait. We expect that kids are learning a new skill, that they're engaging their muscles differently, and that their balance is changing. You should see their pattern progressively get better. They should be able to increase their speed and they should do a better job of navigating uneven surfaces, obstacles like curbs during walking with less and less trouble as they age. The first gait deviation that we are gonna cover is toe walking. So toe walking is typically idiopathic, meaning there is no known cause. We think of our kids as toe walkers if they are walking on their toes more than 50% of the time during either walking or running speeds. Try this at home. If you step up onto your tiptoes, you should feel like you're almost having to lean forward. Your balance has changed, your center of gravity is in front of you. It makes it a little bit harder to stay in this position. You're using different muscles and your balance feels different. That's how our kids feel. So we can't just ask them always to come back down on their heels. We have to work on their balance. We have to work on their strength. And we usually have to work on the range of motion, particularly at their ankles, to be able to allow them to come back down on their heels. Physical therapy for these kiddos may include balance, uneven surfaces, balance beams. We might be doing strengthening. We might be using scooter boards. We might be working on single imbalance, hopping, agility. We'd be targeting all the different areas that your child may be having trouble with because they've been walking on their toes for so long. Sometimes toe walking can also require use of orthotics to be able to consistently get them to come down onto their heels. A physical therapist would be able to walk you through the process of working with an orthotist and they'd be able to touch base with the orthotist as well to make sure that you're getting an orthotic that your child might actually wear. Um, it might include a heel wedge, it might be something taller. A physical therapist would be able to work with you on all of those aspects to make sure that you're getting what you need. The second gait deviation that we're going to cover is in towing. Sometimes that's also called pigeon toe, and that is when your kiddo's feet are kind of pointing toward each other when they're walking forwards. The most common cause of that is muscle weakness. So in our younger kids, we may frequently see an in toe. We expect it to disappear six months, sometimes 12 months after they've started walking, but it should be progressively getting better. If you notice either a significant in toe in your kiddo that it's not progressively getting better, or you have an older child that is continuing to have that gait deviation with their toes pointing inward, that is when you would want to seek physical therapy. The most common cause is weakness around the hips, but there can be other causes as well. So it's important to get a full kind of evaluation to get a range of motion assessment, strength assessment. They would be able to look at balance and they would also be able to look at coordination of the way that your kiddo is using their muscles. Those would all be important things to check to see what the cause is and how we can best fix it. Typical physical therapy for in towing would include strength, it would include endurance, it would include lots of you know different techniques for walking and running, it may include going up and down on different surfaces, um, really working on dynamic activities while your kiddo is strengthening. The last gait deviation that we are gonna talk about is knee valgus. That is sometimes also called knock knees. So that is when your child is walking or running and you notice that their knees seem to be collapsing toward each other, um, or if they're doing something on one foot, like standing on one foot or hopping, that their knee seems to be caving in toward the midline of their body. So the most common cause for that, again, is weakness, typically around the hips. It is most commonly seen in adolescents, particularly in girls, 
or in a child that's gone through a large growth spurt as their muscles are trying to figure out their new body. Physical therapy can look different for this for every kiddo, depending on which muscles they have weakness in. Prolonged knee valgus can also cause range of motion deficits, but again, that would be dependent on which muscles they're using and which muscles they may not be using. So strengthening to target specific muscles, but also looking at balance and agility, which might also be affected by weakness. So those are the three most common gait deviations that we see in children. If you have a new walker and you're seeing any gait deviations, continue to watch them. If after the first six months, you don't see an improvement, that may be time to look at talking to your pediatrician to see if a physical therapy consult is right for you. If you have an older child and you're continuing to see these deficits, that might also be the time to reach out to a PT. If you think that your child would benefit from a PT consult, just go to our website, emergepediatrictherapy.com, fill out our inquiry form, and that can get you guys connected to us here to set up a PT consult. Thanks, have a great day.